All right, well, one of the more poignant moments, really, of the president's address last night came near the end when President Obama evoked the memory of Massachusetts Senator Edward Kennedy. Kennedy, of course, lost his battle with brain cancer a couple of weeks ago. For some of Ted Kennedy's critics, his brand of liberalism represented an affront to American liberty. In their minds, his passion for universal health care was nothing more than a passion for big government. But those of us who knew Teddy and worked with him here, people of both parties, know that what drove him was something more. His friend, Orrin Hatch, he knows that. They worked together to provide children with health insurance. All right, we just heard the president mention Utah Senator Orrin Hatch, and he is our next guest. We're pleased to have him with us today. Senator Hatch, welcome. Good to have you here. Nice to be with you. Uh, you and Senator Kennedy, of course, worked on a lot of things together. You were good friends. Uh, what did you think about the fact that the, the president brought your name into that last night, uh, you know, reaching across the aisle, trying to get you to cooperate? Well, I would like to cooperate. I'd like nothing better. But, you know, what they're offering here is, you know, the president says they're not going to raise your taxes. They're going to have the same choices that you have right now that, uh, you know, the whole process, is, it's not going to cost more than a trillion dollars. Well, none of those things are really true. And I, I admire the president. I think he's a wonderful speaker. I enjoyed the speech last night. On the other hand, it was uh, long on rhetoric and, rhetoric and pretty short on details. And if you look at what's been done, there's a totally partisan bill from the Help Committee in the Senate, totally partisan bill from the Tri-Committees in the House, and of course, Senator Baucus is now uh, said that he's going to be for a bill that has employer right. mandates, employee mandates, and uh, and basically a co-op plan that would be a substitute for the public plan, which uh, a lot of the, the far left will not accept. On the other right. hand, I think it'll wind up being the same as the public plan. It, it, well, Senator, you know everything you just described is exactly what the president pointed to as the most progress we've ever seen on health care reform. He said, you know, we have three out of the four uh, committees have passed a bill out. You just des described those bills. Uh, you've got a, they've got a big date, October 15th, if they want to try to get this thing through on reconciliation. Do you think they're going to make that deadline? And what happens if they don't? Well, first of all, reconciliation should not be used. Reconciliation was designed to take care of specific problems in the budget uh, process where really you just need a majority vote to pass. It was never intended to be used for something as substantive of, as a bill that covers one-sixth of the whole American economy. If they do that, it would be a tremendous abuse of the rules, and I think there would be a, a holy war over it. It's just, uh, I don't think they can do that. I don't think they can get them through the committees and on the floor in time. But on the other hand, uh, if they try to do that, I think that'll be a long, hard battle. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and it's not the way to get to a health care reform bill that everybody, uh, or at least the vast majority, can support. There are ways we could do that, and I'm, 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 I stand ready, willing, and able to help, but not when you're going to have, well, take an employer mandate. The people get hurt the worst, worst on that are going to be the low-income people. Take an employee mandate. They're certainly not going to increase your taxes. Hey, if you're over 66000 a year and you don't get health insurance, you're going to get socked $3,800 right. in taxes. I mean, it just isn't true. And if you, if you go down, you know, virtually everything else, people are going to be pushed into Medicaid. They say no, but even the Congressional Budget Office says at least $10 million. The Lewin Group, which has always been pretty much followed by both Democrats and Republicans, said 119 million people right. would be pushed into, uh, into Medicaid. We're talking about tripling the budget within the next 10 years. It's doubling in five years and tripling in 10 years. Right. And, and they're going to add these kind of costs. And when they talk about a trillion dollar a bill, hey, they don't even count the first four years. In other words, this bill would not be fully implemented until 2013. So we know that in reality it's going to be at least one and a half to two trillion dollars right. on top of a 12 trillion dollar national debt. I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. It just is something that uh, has to be reworked and I think we could rework it if we do it in a All bipartisan right. way. All right. Well, let's, uh, let, let's hope that both sides can get together. Thank you very much, Senator Hatch. It's always a pleasure to speak you with bet. you, sir. Nice to talk to you.